freedom tastes like anything here in Maysai. It's Kentucky Fried Chicken's 11 herbs and spices. So tonight we have the special KFC for him. <laughs> That's what 14-year-old Adil Samon dreamed about. <laughs> While trapped in the cave, hoping to be rescued, he says every night before going to sleep, he got on his knees. And here in the small Baptist church he grew up in, it seems his and so many others' prayers were answered. This is the end of a big celebration here, and boys all over this area, their families are welcoming them home. It's just such an extraordinary atmosphere. All over town last night, those 12 young boys who were separated from their families, stuck in a dank, dark cave for almost three weeks, finally going home. Porn Chai Kamluang, nicknamed T, swarmed by his relatives, sleepy, Hello. but Hello. strong. How are you? You're happy? Yeah. How are you feeling? Just hours earlier, flashing wide grins, clad in their uniforms, the Wild Boars soccer team suited up at long last. <laughs> Triumphantly walking through the halls of the hospital that's been their home for more than a week, saying their goodbyes to the staff that so carefully nursed them back to health. And for the first time in almost a month, with their hands clasped in gratitude, tasting fresh air. Arriving to their first press conference. This has been an absolutely amazing morning, hearing all sorts of new details about that extraordinary rescue. Flashing that V for victory that's been their hallmark. The boys and their 25-year-old coach introduced themselves. Nicknames and all. We truly appreciate all your kindness. Currently, physically and mentally, the boys are ready. Doctors say they lost, on average, nine pounds while in the cave, but have gained roughly six back. After eating three to four meals, their body strength is coming back. Joining the boys, the three Navy SEALs who led the heroic rescue effort and the doctor who stayed with the team in that deep, dark cave. His nickname? Superman. Are you a hero? No, no, no. Everyone here thinks you're a hero. Is there one phrase in English that you can use to describe how you feel today? Mm, really, really... Happy? Happy and impressed. Very, very happy. Yeah, it's been a good day. <laughs> Elated now, but he admits he was worried that the boys would make it out alive. In honor of the rescuers, half the boys announcing they want to be Navy SEALs when they grow up, the other half, professional soccer players. In front of the world today, they all apologize to their parents for ever going into the cave in the first place. I want to say sorry to my mother because I'm a stubborn boy. When I went to the cave, I didn't tell her. Their ordeal began three and a half weeks ago. This video was taken the day the 12 boys and their assistant coach made the roughly 45 minute bike trek up this road towards the cave. Two members of the wild boars who didn't make the trip told my colleague Matt Gutman that team excursions into the caves were nothing unusual. I've gone inside four times. It takes about five or six hours. Was it scary at all when you went into the caves? No. Because when we visit the cave, we all go together and bring plenty of flashlights and food. The coach today explaining why the team first journeyed there, saying it was something they'd planned in advance and had only planned to stay there about an hour. We put it on Facebook on Wednesday. We met on Saturday at 10. After we warmed up, we went to the cave to study, see what's inside. But it was the beginning of the rainy season, and sure enough, while they were in the cave, outside, it began raining hard. The soccer team was trapped. The coach clarifying today the boys actually did know how to swim. It's something they do after practices and games. But on that day, the water came too fast and too high. Everybody says, do you want to go in there and look? If you want to go, you have to swim. 24 hours after the group disappeared, rescue workers started to make their way in. The team remained trapped unaware of night or day, and especially of the growing international effort to find them, saying today they followed clear water deeper into the labyrinth, thinking it might lead to an exit. Then, 10 days into the team's ordeal, finally, a sign of hope. How many of you? 13? Brilliant. All 12 long lost boys and their coach huddled together, exhausted, hungry, but alive surviving by drinking water dripping from the cave walls. 
During today's press conference, the boys talking about seeing that British diver for the first time, Adun translating, helping the rest of his teammates understand. And you speak English? A letter. He said hearing those British divers was like a miracle. He didn't know at first if they were real or just a hallucination. I don't know what to ask him. I just say hello. You just say hello? Yes. This Royal Thai Navy SEAL describing how he gave the clothing off his back to help the children. I took my clothes off completely. When I arrived, I had to give it all to the kids. While inside, the coach led his team through meditation to keep everyone calm. Coach Ake said everybody had to stay still? Yes. To conserve energy? Yes. For the first time today, we're learning the boys volunteered for who would be rescued first. The team joking about wanting to stay down in the cave to eat the snacks the seals had brought them. The majority raised their hands slowly. Most wanted to stay with the seal. The world held its breath as one by one, over a harrowing three-day mission, the boys were pulled out. We conclude that they are mentally and physically healthy. We believe they can live a normal life. The boys also paying homage to Saman Gunan, the Navy SEAL who died trying to rescue them. I feel sorry for your loss. They'll be ordained as Buddhist monks to honor his legacy. At this temple in the hills outside Mei Sai, <laughs> prayers and thanks the boys here to have their spirits welcomed home. Their parents sitting in quiet contemplation with their children gathered at their feet. So the boys have just kneeled in front of these newly ordained monks. And in the coming weeks, this is the path that they will follow. They will too be ordained monks. Each family preparing their son for a period of religious service. But before that time comes, these boys get to be kids again. At Pirapat Son Pyangjai's home, his nickname is Knight, okay. a northern Thai tradition to call his mind back after so long gone from home. All across Mei Sai, families like Doms clutching their children tightly tonight, making up for the hugs they missed for all those days inside the cave of the sleeping lady. For Nightline, I'm James Longman in Chiang Rai, Thailand. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.